Peekaboo. And oftentimes during the holidays, friends and families get together and they have discussions and arguments and maybe even debates of where they should be putting their money. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the four homes of money, because money needs a home to live. In this video, starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And we are here in episode two of hashtag Vlogmas, where we'll be committed to every day for the next 24 days, beginning December 1st, to share with you a few things. Number one, basic financial literacy and how to win the money game. In these videos, we will not entertain you, but we want to help you understand basic rules to win the money game. Number two, how to have an income strategy. So therefore, you are in control of your income in 2021. You demolish and smash the pandemic and put it behind you and make sure you never ever, ever have to worry about money ever again. Number three, also personal and leadership development because, listen, if you want to raise your money game, you want new money, guess what? You need new habits, you have new skills, and how you develop that is through personal and leadership development. So I want to get in today a system for you to have a very logical application for how to process where to put your serious money, money that you know needs to be there down the road for you to retire, to send your kids to college, to invest in other businesses. I'm not talking about being speculative or risky. I'm talking about your serious, safe money. And I have a system because oftentimes when families and friends get together and they argue and they discuss and even debate on where to put their money because people are very argumentative and defensive when it comes to their finances because when emotion is high, guess what happens? Logic is down. Emotion is high, logic is down. However, using a system, logic goes up because emotions are down. You can process and see things clearly for what they are and what they do. So money needs a home, right? So in this system, I put down all the different things I could put my money into. In this example, banks, okay? I could put my money inside a bank. I could put my money inside a 401k or slash retirement plan, whether it be a 403b, uh, for a nonprofit, a 457, if you're working for a city, a municipality, a TSP, a thrift savings plan, if you're working for the federal government. But pretty much the same category here and saying stock market slash 401k plan for retirement. Real estate, I can put money, money inside uh, property or properties or this mystery industry. But I wanted to also have some characteristics. What are the characteristics I'm talking about? Based on my system, I want my money to have these characteristics. And I call this my laser test. What does laser test stand for? L stands for liquidity, Whoosh, liquidity. I want my money liquid. If I, get a, if I gotta put my money there, earn a particular rate of return, let it marinate there for a period of months or years, I wanna make sure I can access it with an 800 number or EFT transfer back into my bank account. The next one is S stands for safety. I want my money safe. I don't wanna worry about my money. I wanna look over my back. I want my money to be there. Number three, I want my money earning a decent rate of return, outpacing inflation. And last but not least, cherry on top, I wanna to make sure my money also has significant tax advantages. So when I pull my money out, I either minimize or eliminate what I pay in federal and or state income tax. So let's get started. So when we're talking about banks, is money in the bank liquid? Yep, actually it is. So money in the bank is liquid, sure it is. You put my money in and they can take my money out, whether it be a bank CD, I have to just marinate it there for a year or two or three or five years, depending on how long that bank CD is there for. However, I do pull my money up before the early withdrawal period. I have to pay an early withdrawal penalty. But for the most part, money inside banks are liquid. Checking account, savings account, CDs, yes, it's liquid. Now, is money safe? Sure it is. Up to FDIC amount, which is $250,000. So just in case my money is there, marinating in a bank account at 0.01% interest, 0.5% interest, 0.8% interest, at least my money's liquid, at least my money's safe, at least up to $250,000. Number three, does my money earn a rate of return? I just kind of took a jab at that, didn't I? Uh, no, it doesn't earn a rate of return. Why? Well, I mean, are you fired up about your money earning a 0.5% interest rate? I mean, are you fired up about your money earning a 0.8% interest rate? At least round up to one. And even then, if you even round up to one, are you fired up and excited to open up a checking account, savings account, a money market account at your local bank? Probably not. Maybe back in the 70s and 80s when inflation was the highest, where people were getting double digit returns back in the 70s and 80s, but it's not the 70s and 80s. The banks are paying a poor interest rate, so therefore you have a poor rate of return on your money. And last but not least, does money have a tax advantage? So if I put my money in, inside let's say a savings account and it's earning an interest rate, or a, uh, uh, um, a money market account or a CD, I have to pay 
income taxes, because I have to address this 1099-INT interest that you're earning money. You have to add that interest, so it's kind of slap in the face. So you have X amount of dollars in there, you have a point, you know, 0.5% interest rate, and you have to owe tax on three, four, five dollars that you earned there throughout the year. But guess what? You have to add that to your adjusted gross income. And guess what you might have to pay? Income taxes on that money that you earn in the bank. So two out of four, is money is my money liquid? Yes, safe, yes. Rate of return high? Nope. And tax advantages, no. Okay, now the next home for money could be the stock market specifically inside a 401k. Now, with that being said, I wanna make sure I disclose, I am not a registered investment advisor, I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I giving financial advice. Okay, legal disclaimer, done, okay? But I want to educate you on the things that you need to ask a person that does give you investment advice on these areas. So for example, if you have your money inside a retirement plan, and you put your money inside the stock market with inside that retirement plan, more specifically with inside a 401k. Now, is that money liquid? Well, traditionally speaking, no, it's not liquid. You have to be 59 and a half years old to withdraw this money without paying a dime in early withdrawal penalty, but you will have to pay income tax. Now, with that being said, I'm doing this video in 2020 during the pandemic for Vlogmas 2020 and a specific provision called the CARES Act which was passed by President Trump, says there might be some provision there that you don't have to pay an early withdrawal penalty if you withdraw money from your 401k, nor potentially do you have to pay any withdrawals that you make from the capital and interest you earned on that capital with inside that if you defer, I believe it's over a three year period. But again, check with your tax professional about how to properly do that, specifically in the year of the 2020 pandemic, when you are taking money out of your 401k plan, but potentially, Potentially, only in that regard, can money be withdrawn, potentially without paying a dime of tax, out of your 401k. The second area, is money inside the stock market safe? Well, I would say yes and no, right? Why would I say yes and no? It's safe when it's growing, but no when it's, the stock market is dropping. As we know, the stock market, when there's no ceiling, there's also no basement. You can earn a lot of money, but in any given year, in any given moment, you can also lose a lot of money. And how do you predict that? Nobody knows. So I'd hate for you to be retired at 60, 65 years old. If you take an early retirement, 50, 55 years old, who knows? Whenever you decide to want to retire, 70, 78, no matter what. When you retire, you don't want a stock market to drop and causes your income that you were able to withdraw from your 401k or your retirement plan to be less because you had less capital and principal inside it to make a withdrawal from. You just don't want to be caught in the wrong year. And again, if I had a crystal ball to tell you when the stock market would drop, I'd tell you exactly how to move your money, but who has that? Nobody. Third thing, back to our filter. Does it have a decent rate of return? Of course it does. But then again, of course it doesn't. So is it safe? Yes and no. Does it have a decent rate of return? Yes and no. And number four, because again, you can lose money inside a 401k plan because it's tied to the stock market and there's no guarantees in the stock market. And number four, taxation. Uh, yes, it's tax advantage or not tax at all when it's growing, but no, when you withdraw this money for your retirement account, the reason Uncle Sam's, hey, go grow, 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 grow your money tree, let it grow, let it grow, let it grow, so therefore it becomes this million dollar harvest. Now I'm gonna tax you at 25%. Now I'm gonna tax you at 30%. So yes, when it's growing, there's no taxes. When you withdraw for income, guess what now? You have to pay that tax, so it's yes and no. So the home of money, based on my laser test, Right, what do I have? No in liquidity, half on safe, half on rate, decent rate of return, and half on tax advantage. Okay, well let's go to real estate, another home for money. I remember uh, people say, hey man, you know, when you make some money, go buy some real estate. Make some money, buy some real estate. Make some money, buy some real estate. Well, is money inside real estate? You buy some real estate right now, you put a down payment, buy some property, buy some real estate investment properties. Three flat, four flat, two unit, whatever. Apartments, is your money liquid? The answer is flat no. The only way you get money out of real estate is two ways. You either refinance your property, cash out refinance, or number two, you sell the property and then at the closing table you get a check from the title company of the difference between your cost fees and expenses of the transaction and also from what you owe from the mortgage company and that net proceeds is now your check, your equity, which is now a check. That's how you get money out of real estate, whether you cash out refinance or you sell the property. So right now money is not liquid. It's not like you can chop down the wall and say, hey, I need 10 grand, here we go. Number two, is money inside real estate safe? The answer is, well, yes and no. Depending on your zip code, it's yes because some people didn't face a drop even during the Great Recession and the equity that they have inside the property. I mean, people inside you know, West Palm Beach or Naples, Boca Raton, you know, uh, San Francisco, maybe your property or zip code did not face a drop in the equity of the property. But neighborhoods I grew up in, Chicago, Cicero, Stickney, Berwyn, Santa Ana, California, right? Those areas that you, 
live in potentially may drop based on the local community uh, real estate value and you could potentially lose money inside real estate in, in terms of value. We've heard many people have less equity in the property and more they owed and people are having a choice. Do I keep the property I owe more in this house than what it's worth or do I just give the keys back to the bank and say, hey, you deal with it. But uh, that was happening. That was a reality for a lot of people the, during the Great Recession, 2008, 2009. Now, third filter, rate of return. Does real estate have a decent rate of return? Again, depends on your area. Depends on your zip code. Depends on your zip code. Yes and no. They're based on some areas, there was a decent rate of return in terms of value and equity and appreciation of the value of the property. In some areas, it declined in value. Tax advantages. Well, yes, real estate does have some significant tax advantages. And, and whether you're real estate investing or you have property, whether you sell the equity and you're single, you're up to 250 or with you're married up to $500,000 of equity of the value, of the gain, gain of the value of the property, you might have to pay any capital gains income tax. Uh, you may want to do a 1031 exchange from one property to a like-kind property, like-kind exchange, what they call it inside real estate exchange, of a 10, we call it a 1031 exchange. You might have to, have to pay income tax on the gains you have with real estate appreciation with inside your property. So that's the benefit of, of, of real estate. So does it pass completely my four filters? Uh, uh, liquidity, no. Uh, safety, yes and no. Rate of return, yes and no. And tax advantages, yes. Okay? What about this mystery category? Is it possible there is something with liquidity? Is it possible that it does have safety? Is it possible that it does have a decent rate of return above the pace of inflation? And is it possible that it does have significant tax advantages? Yes, there is such a category. It's a category a lot of people don't talk about. I don't know why, probably due to the aging sales force and uh, a demographic of this category. But what is this fourth home of money? This fourth home of money is the, not the stock market, not the real estate market, not the bank market, but the, Life insurance industry. Yes, life insurance is more for than dying. Life insurance is more for what? Life. Life insurance for living. First of all, it's a selfless act, right? People buy life insurance because they love their family, they love their spouse, they, love, right? they want to make sure that somebody they love is financially prepared and taken care of long after they've passed away. But furthermore than that, life insurance is a significant tax advantaged haven for your money to grow and accumulate. And even if you need benefits from the policy or policies that you may obtain, you might not ever have to pay a dime in income tax. So let me go over this again. Is the money inside life insurance policies liquid? Yes. You can either take a loan or withdrawal from these type of policies ba based on their early withdrawal penalties and the surrender charge schedules. You have to ask your life insurance agent about that when you can properly and appropriately take money out of a policy. Kind of similar to how a, a bank CD uh, uh, approach, but not necessarily the same thing. But there are some early withdrawal provisions that you can either minimize, mitigate, or eliminate by understanding the loan withdrawal provision. But for the most part, you can take money out of a life insurance policy. You don't have to die to use it. Number two, is it safe? Well, based on the drop in the stock market, there's specific policies out there, whether it be whole life, universal life, or index universal life. Most people that look at life insurance policies say, oh, your whole life sucks, or you know, trash value, whatever the case may be. Listen, there's more styles of life insurance than just whole life. And oftentimes people just try to categorize life insurance into one thing. Listen, it's an asset class. And thanks to capitalism, thanks to competition, thanks to the growth of our insurance industry, there are more financial products in the life insurance industry. They're specifically designed for helping one in the retirement planning process. So money can be in a position where you don't lose capital. You don't lose previous year's gains inside a life insurance policy. Listen, I've owned a policy for 20 years. I have not had any losses with inside my life insurance policies. Matter of fact, I used money outside my life insurance policy to invest in businesses. The third thing, does it earn a decent rate of return? Listen, stock market gains, stock market losses, this is not variable policies I'm talking about. There's a policy out there called variable universal life policy, that's a security. Again, I'm not an investment advisor. Again, I'm not a registered investment advisor or financial advisor, I'm not giving you investment advice. But check with your financial advisor about variable policies, but again, you can lose money inside those policies too as well. Now, with tax advantages, because of the significant advantage of life insurance using um, section 101A, 7702, just to name a couple tax codes off the top of my head, you can take money from an insurance policy smartly without ever having to pay a dime in tax. Now, I've got a video out there that shows a couple case studies Now, certain entrepreneurs say that you wouldn't believe would actually pull money out of a life insurance policy to fund their dream, their business, and fund publicly traded companies as of today. With that being said, guys, the four homes of money here, liquidity, safety, rate of return, we compared banks, stock market, real estate, life insurance. Again, not one is for everyone. 
I can't say there's one all be all, but if you are asking a question, hey, where should I put my money? You say, how do I build my financial home? Any home is built on a solid foundation. You wanna make sure you put that foundation through these filters. So when you build your financial home, right, and the big winds of life come crashing and it knocks down your house, you wanna make sure you build or rebuild on a solid foundation and get back up again. And uh, when you're building wealth, when you're building legacy, when building generational wealth, you wanna make sure you have a solid foundation of which you can build on that no matter what happens, you can continue your game plan for your family long into the future, regardless of any crisis or economic downturns. So with that being said, guys, another video I'd like to suggest to you is how millionaires build wealth using life insurance if you want to consider this category for your financial future. Now, oftentimes, again, the biggest misnomer, the biggest myth and misconception is that life insurance is for the rich, life insurance is just for dying, life insurance is expensive, life insurance is only when I have money. No, life insurance, when I was in the military, one of the first things I did with my allotments, one of the things that we all did when we entered the military, is pay 15, 25 bucks a month for what they call SGLI, Servicemen's Group Life Insurance, just to protect, you know, for the worst case scenario. And if the military said, listen, it makes sense that these service members are putting their life on the line, if something happens to them, we want to make sure that their loved ones, their, their, their family has, has some form of at least death benefit or some form of compensation um, from their service to the country. And so when I'm looking at this, when I'm looking at you, you're saving for your financial future. You have a husband, you have a wife, you have kids, you have people that you love and care about. Don't you want to leave behind them something for them to remember you by? Do, they want, do you want people to say, okay, you know what, I, I want to be able to celebrate your life versus mourning your death and, and sadly having to use GoFundMe for that? No, no, no. The reason why people watch our YouTube channel is because they want to think like a millionaire, they want to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore one day they become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So in this video, I'm going to suggest for you to watch is how millionaires build wealth. So check out this video. And uh, I wanna do a comment contest. So if you're watching this video, I've got a book here I wanna give to you, Your Next Five Moves by my mentor, Patrick Bet David here. I wanna give a book from me to you. And by the way, we got a bunch of winners. Uh, let's put it over here real quick. These are three winners that we had from our last video. You guys are getting this book too as well. So congratulations for participating in this video comment contest. And uh, comment contest for this video is, when you watch this video, answer this question. Drop your answer in the comment section below because I'm gonna give you this book from my mentor and it's gonna be a specially autographed version to as well, signed on 9-11, which today right now is a Wall Street Journal best-selling book, Your Next Five Moves. But I want you to answer this question. Are you ready? Here we go. What are the two styles of life insurance? What are the two styles of life insurance, and the way I want you to answer it is this. The two styles of life insurance is fill in the blanks, okay? The two styles of life insurance is, and fill in the blanks. The first three people that drop a comment on either our YouTube channel or our Facebook page after watching this video is gonna win a book from me to you. The first three people that comment on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page are both going to win a book from me to you from uh, my mentor who wrote the book, Your Next Five Moves. So that being said, guys, I'm fired up for you. You know, this topic so, so emotional because people defend financially what their moves are. And you know, when, again, when emotions are high, logic is low and people defend it even though they may not know all the information of why they're doing what they're doing. But if you have a filter, you have a system, what does the system stand for? Save yourself time, energy, and money and keep your relationships healthy, fruitful, and intact. That being said, guys, again, this is Vlogmas 2020, second episode that we're doing this, another 22 days of us sharing with you videos to be helpful, to educate you, maybe some for some of you guys to entertain you. Again, check out hashtag Seven Figure Squad and Vlogmas and all the YouTubing community is doing this right now. A lot of YouTubers are doing this right now. And uh, we wanna do our part to give back to you to make sure we help you set up Pandemic 2020 and smash it to make sure you have a prosperous 2021 so therefore you financially can get ahead by winning the money game. So therefore you can become potentially a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. Please drop your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and you hit notifications so you'll be alerted the next time we upload our next video. So that being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue live smart, continue love smart, and be money smart today.
Let's go.